Okay, in the last video, look at this beautiful fly right here with the big red eyes. So cute. I wish I had that. Anyways, in the last video, I talked about how there are several different things that we can compare between living organisms, especially when it comes to genetics. There's the genome size, there's the number of genes actually contained within the genome, and then we talked about the chromosome numbers, the diploid chromosome numbers. And those things are all separate. You have to be careful about that. Really make sure you understand the distinction between what genomes are, the genome size, uh, the number of genes, and the diploid chromosome numbers. They are all different and they don't mean the same thing. So when we talk about genome, so here I have a little reminder rem reminding you to understand the difference between the difference between the number of genes and the genome size. Well, we're talking about genome size and there's extra little notes that are hidden in the syllabus that are calling attention to this. You need to know that the genome, my genome, my entire genome is all of my entire genetic information. So all of my base pairs, all of the DNA that's there. And I know that not all of that DNA is actually stuff that codes for proteins. The stuff that codes for proteins, depending on the organism, and I'm a human, but depending on the organism, makes up a different proportion of the entire genome. So have I emphasized enough that your genome is all of your DNA? The amount of DNA in a set of chromosomes in a species measured in millions of base pairs. You're gonna see BP representing base pairs. Total amount of DNA, not the number of genes. I had to make a video just about this. The sizes of genomes depend on the actual species. This is just for comparison. I think the specific syllabus statement actually gives you some suggestions for the organisms you should know, I don't think you're expected to recall these actual numbers. It's more likely to show up in some kind of database question or some kind of application or comparison question. So if you understand the big picture, you'll be okay. So a T2 bacteriophage, this is a type of virus actually has 0.18 million base pairs. So that's 180,000 base pairs. E. coli has only 5 million base pairs. Fruit flies have 140 million base pairs. Humans have 3,000 million base pairs. And this type of woodland plant called a Paris japonica, this is the actual genus species name. I happen to remember that this is called Paris. Paris japonica has 150,000 million base pairs. That wins compared to humans. But same question I've asked in several of the other videos, does a larger genome size necessarily mean more complexity? And when you learn about natural selection and evolution and different ways of how variety can arise, you'll start to understand how some of these genomes can get so big because of something called polyploidy and speciation as well too. Go woodland plants.